Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Shireen, if you don't know who I am. And today, I decided to sit on the balcony. I have a tiny little balcony that overlooks a main road. So, if you hear any honks, I'm sorry. I really hope the sound quality in this is good. Today's video, I'm gonna try to be as positive as I can, even though today's video is me talking about all the things I hate about China. I'm not gonna try to rip China apart. China has been good to me. If you wanna see the things I love about China, I'm gonna do that video and post it right after this one. So I will link it here, which I probably cannot do because this is the future. No, this is, this is the past. The first thing I hate is the most obvious thing, VPNs. Certain websites are blocked in China because the government the government has its reasons why it's trying to restrict information from its people. We need VPNs here to access certain websites and apps like WhatsApp, um, Facebook, Instagram, um, Gmail, Google. There are a lot of websites that are blocked and a lot of these websites us as Westerners rely on on a day-to-day -day basis even just to communicate with our families. So VPNs are annoying. You get used to it, of course, and you figure out what VPN works for you. But VPNs are hella annoying. They don't stay connected. My friend used to joke that there's like a whole army of Chinese soldiers like sitting in a massive room in front of computers and they're just like typing away trying to block every VPN. And the only time where VPNs connect is when like one of them goes to use the bathroom. So I made a list, I'm just gonna go in order. Racism. Racism should probably have been number one, but I do want to do a dedicated video to the ins and outs of the racism I've experienced here, especially in the job market, and also the ignorant ideas they have about black people. So I'm just going to briefly mention racism. Racism and the next thing I'm going to talk about are the two reasons why I will be leaving China soon. So yeah, the racism sucks. Like, racism anywhere sucks. Another thing I do not enjoy having to experience is the visa situation here. Getting a residence permit, which is essentially what you need to live and work here, is an arduous, annoying, endless task. And because the rules change every few months, I feel like no one knows what the hell they're doing. Like, literally. It is just one big guessing game. No one knows exactly what they're doing. Everyone is unsure. It's not like in other countries where you do XYZ and you are good to go. Here, you provide a certain document, but you need something else. And the other thing you need should have been authenticated. It should go here, it should go there. It's just so messy and muddy. And I used to think it was because I was a foreigner, so I couldn't really understand the process, but no. Chinese people don't even understand either. And I'm being harsh, but that's because I have dealt with a series of incompetent people over the past few weeks, so I am just over it. Another thing, having to use your passport for almost everything. Go to the bank, need your passport. Go to buy a train ticket, need your passport. Buying a bus ticket out of Shanghai, they need your passport. Buying fries at McDonald's, they need your passport. Trying to get water from the water fountain, they need your passport. Like, your passport is needed for almost everything. And it is, I mean, I get it, it's your form of identification. But to us Westerners, well, to me at least, my passport is like this sacred little book that I keep at home, safely tucked away. Like, I hate having to travel around with my passport for fear of losing it. Because if I lose my, my passport in China, what am I going to do? <laughs> so yeah, carrying around your passport is necessary, but ugh, it is so annoying. The next thing some people like, some people don't, is the staring. The staring never stops. When I first got here, I thought, okay, I'm new. They haven't seen this black girl on the block. But no, they've seen me on the block for like a year and a half now, and they still stare. I see hundreds of thousands of Chinese people every day in my daily commute and I can remember some people like I oh I, I see you every Tuesday at 8 o'clock on this metro you know so it's like I know I know I'm different I get it but I look the same I did last week I look the same I did last month I look the same I did last year when you first saw me like I don't get why we stare so much my delivery just came so the next thing I cannot stand is picky taxi men. So in Jamaica, 
The taxi men are practically begging you to come into their car. They will stop on the side of the road, get out of their car, they'll see you walking past, and they will literally convince you, give you a full essay on why you need to come into their car and have them take you where you're going. But here, you put your hand out to get a taxi and that taxi is ignoring you. Certain nights, like I remember one time, me and my friends were gonna go out and it was three of us, but one of, oop, but one of us, she couldn't make it because literally, 10 taxi cabs passed her that night and she could she just could not get a taxi cab that's before we had olama no i'm hungry that's why i'm still thinking about olama olama is for food <laughs> but yeah that was when we didn't have didi didi is for taxis it's an app so we were relying on the taxis in the street just driving by like i don't understand how they're so picky the more pick choose and refuse like aren't y'all trying to feed your family pushing is a thing here lining up is not a thing here especially for public transportation i used to take the bus part of the way to school and the grandmas and grandpas they are aggressive they're trying to get on that bus first to get those seats you don't need to be pushing but i think they're competing against each other the competition was fierce <laughs> also lining up like they try. I will give it to them. Chinese people in Shanghai do try to line up. But then there's that one person. That one person who moves too quickly and everyone's just like, where's he going? The, the idea of a line just disintegrates into nothing and we're all just pushing our way onto the train or onto the, the bus. The next thing I definitely will not miss is the pollution and being sick. When I first got here, it, essentially my entire first year, I was sick every other week. I've been healthy for maybe about two months now, but I do have a little bit of a like a pollution cough. But it is far better than I used to be, especially in the winter and when I just got here. You're just always sick, and especially teaching kids. Kids are just like, <coughs> 老师, teacher, <coughs> all day long. So it, it's definitely taken a toll on my immune system, but thank God I have been pretty healthy for the past few months. So definitely wear your mask, bring over your medicine because the Chinese medicine is not very strong and prepare to have a chest infection. You are not a part of Shanghai until Shanghai is a part of you. <laughs> Another thing I heavily dislike is white advertising. And this kind of links back to consumerism. I should probably mention that first. So there is a huge consumer, consume, 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 consume culture here. Advertise, consume, buy this, buy that. And I mean, I feel like the main reasons is because China is experiencing a uh, growth in wealth. There are a lot of new wealthy people and families, like very wealthy, and they're kind of learning how to express their wealth. So that heavy consumerism definitely has a market here. Even the, the stores are just massive. I mean, I've never been to such big stores. Okay, there are several fast fashion chain stores all over the city. Like practically every two metro stops, you can find a Forever 21, H&M, Zara, and the list goes on. Seeing so much consumerism in your face is a little bit I just don't enjoy it, especially because I know how problematic fast fashion is. This I say while consuming fast fashion, but let the hypocrite live. <laughs> I am kind of a hypocrite because I happily shop in, in H&M, well I used to, and Forever 21 and Zara, I freaking love Zara, but I, I'm honestly, I'm really trying to do better because I, I know, I know what the cost of fast fashion is. I know that there are people in factories in awful working conditions, especially women and, and like considering myself a feminist and supporting fast fashion is completely contradictory. There are so many women whose women's rights are completely violated just to make some clothes for us to wear. With those wages, they can't even buy the things that they're making. A lot of women lose their jobs when they get pregnant. They are sexually abused and assaulted on, on, on job sites. So I will link some information below on fast fashion. Fast fashion is really an issue and as someone who consumes it and who knows about the issue, I, I understand how hard it is to move away from fast fashion. 
and the thing is I never even used to be into fast fashion because I used to make my own clothes now all of a sudden I'm in China consuming things that are problematic there are a lot of people who don't have enough clothes and have to use fast fashion because it is, it is cheap Second to fast fashion is their obsession with whiteness and white advertising. Whiteness being white people. Um, it is a known fact that China is up the white man's ass. <laughs> and I, I say that because I have seen it and even my white friends say that. I have seen the privilege. If you have never seen white privilege in action, come to China. Jamaica is a predominantly black country but we have a good maybe 15 to 20 percent of people who are mixed Indian, Chinese, and white. China is arguably one of the most racially homogenous countries in the world. Everyone is everyone is Chinese. So it is just puzzling to see so much white advertising in a country where there aren't any white people. I did advertising and I understand aspirational marketing. I understand using someone who you want to aspire to be. But you can't be white, like you can't change your race. So how does that even work? In Jamaica, we have a mixed pool of people to choose from for our advertising, so I understand it. I'm not gonna be a non-white person and look at a white person advertising a product that comes from my country and somehow identify with that and want the product. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but it's just weird. One more thing that I find really annoying and I hate about China is how difficult it is to send money home or to take money out of the country. And I understand the government does this because they're being selfish. They're, they're thinking about their country, they're caring about their people, and they're making it hard to move money out of the country, especially with it being a communist country. They want to keep their shit in. But I'm a foreigner here and I want to send money home, I want to take money out and it's just been, it's really hard figuring out the best way, especially especially if you didn't prepare before. So I suggest having a bank account that is not Chinese and setting up a PayPal so that you can kind of transfer money from your Chinese bank account to your non-Chinese bank account using PayPal. So the last thing I have on this wonderful list of things I hate about China, Chinese food with meat, oh my gosh. Chinese people or restaurants when they make food, especially vegetable dishes, is they just love to sprinkle a little bit of meat on it they just sprinkle meat as their garnish so when I had just gotten here I was training with my company and they had a dinner like a welcome dinner so we went to dinner and before I had even come to China I let them know that I am vegan so I hope that is not an issue and that you know whatever they provide for me will suit my dietary preferences so we went to dinner and I'm not blaming anyone they assured me that's a restaurant they always go to they know what the veggie options are so we got a few veggie options so they ordered an extra dish for me to take home and the next morning well the next afternoon at the apartment this is when we were all staying together I pulled out my eggplant ready to get my rice and my chopsticks and get me right for lunch so I pulled out my eggplant warm it up and I look and there's like these little square bits of something that I thought was ginger so then I look closer because now it's daylight the night before it was a dimly lit restaurant we were drinking or by Joe laughing having fun and now it's bright morning the Sun is telling me the truth and I realized that it is meat so I asked my roommate I think it was Gina I'm like Gina what the hell is this <laughs> she's like that looks like pork that looks like pork so I may or may not have eaten little bits of pig in my freaking eggplant and from then on I learned my lesson and it's not even that I learned my lesson it's that I tried my best to learn how to navigate being veget at least being vegetarian here and like there's so many times I've gotten meat in my food like wo butchuro wo butchuro wo butchuro wo buyaoro I don't want no meat <laughs> and it doesn't matter how I say it there's been more than a handful of times that I've gotten meat in my vegetable dishes so that is something you have to be on top of you have to let them know you just don't want any damn meat <laughs> this has been all the things I hate about China I'm sure there's more but we're not gonna get any more negative I don't mean to offend anyone I'm just giving a part of my experience 
both positive and negative because there is a what I love about China video coming after this so thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video bye